I've been on the search for the most affordable housing options and I've discovered five of them that I think you should know about. A few of these you probably already heard of, some of them you may not have, and some of them are so interesting that I can't stop talking about them. Now, one affordable housing option that I found extremely interesting, 3D printed houses. Many of my subscribers have asked me about 3D printed homes and the truth is there's just not enough information about them. It's on its way kind of thing. Every article I've found about 3D printed homes, they say that they can print a 3D printed home for about $10,000, but where are they? Now there are some plans in California to build tiny home communities built to 3Ds, but everything is like in the future. There's been a couple that have been built in New Jersey and I've tried to get this guy from TikTok to come on and talk to me about his 3D printed homes. But even then there's only a couple of them being built currently. The biggest problem right now with 3D printed homes is the machines that actually print them themselves. They're very big, they're very bulky, and they have to remove remain extremely level as they're pouring them. Now you can pour them in about 45 minutes for a small tiny home, but most of the homes that we are going to be living in are going to be 1500 square feet to 2000 square feet. So they have to maintain that levelness the whole entire pour. So that's the biggest problem with 3D printed homes. I do feel like that's something that's going to be happening in the future. And they're definitely energy efficient because they are made of a concrete type material. So you're going to be able to regulate the temperature inside your 3D printed home a lot better than you would with a typical stick built construction. Now there are companies like Icon that's out of Austin, Texas that are making 3D printed homes, but currently they're just making them for um, like tiny homes for the homeless and and they've been building them all over the place, all over Austin, Texas. I would love for Icon, hint, hint, to get a hold of me because I'd like to take a closer look at the 3D printed home so I could give you some more information, but no one seems to be reaching me back. So everything I found was on the internet. So if you're a 3D printed company and you wanna like have me come out, film your houses for my YouTube channel, I'd greatly appreciate it because I'd like some more information myself on them because all I can find is what's on the internet and everybody knows that things on the internet aren't necessarily true. I know, shocking, right? Now, container homes are another affordable option that many of my subscribers wanted to know about and they are an affordable housing option. The biggest problem with container homes is zoning and regulation because a lot of people are not in your area are not gonna allow for a container home. The best thing I can tell you to do is to take your plans for your container home and bring them to local officials so they can see what the final product is going to look like because in their mind they're just thinking it's a container but if you actually show them the finished product a lot of times they'll end up working with you a lot closer. Now the other problems when it comes to container homes is the construction itself. So if you're planning on doing it yourself, in some cases, some people have bought a container and it wasn't the right type of container that they should have been using. It wasn't in the proper condition to be used to built into a house and use for long-term living use. Another problem that has come up with container homes is some people have used the wrong kinds of insulation when they're putting it together and then they had to redo the insulation. So this is one of those things that you need to work with other people that have built container homes and listen in intently because they've already made those mistakes. So learn from people that have made the mistakes so you don't make them when you're building your own container home. Now there are companies throughout the United States that make container homes themselves. So you may wanna get in contact with them and see if they'll work with you and to build your own container home. That would be my best suggestion, especially if you're not a handy person, a DIY person that knows anything about construction. Work with others that know what they're doing so that way you don't make mistakes. My husband likes to think he's handy, but he's not that handy and he wouldn't even attempt this. The appeal of container homes is their cost effectiveness. Now, a container home can cost as little as $10,000 up to about 35,000, that's about the average. But you can get a container home, of course, with all the bells and whistles and they can cost you over $100,000. So when you're pricing out your container home, these are the things you're gonna wanna price out. First is going to be your size and layout and how many containers you need. Then you're also gonna need to know about the welding and fabrication costs. Even though it is a container, you're still gonna need to have it cleaned properly before you live in it. So you're gonna find out that cost as well. Of course, the cost of plumbing and electrical, your siding, your flooring, the kitchens, the bathrooms, the lofts, the windows, the doors, and how much the installation is going to cost because it's a container and it's, it goes on a crane. It's gonna be lowered onto a pad. And don't forget the cost of the concrete pad that your container home's going on, that's gonna cost you too. So make sure you do proper prior planning. So I was driving down the road the other day and I happened to see one of these homes in my area that has always piqued my curiosity and it's a dome home. I don't know if you've ever seen one before. This particular one in my area, I wouldn't consider it necessarily a, the 
typical dome home, but I ended up researching them a little bit more. And I found out some really cool things about dome homes themselves. The average dome home, about 200 square feet, is about $5,000. And if you continue to add little domes on top of it, of course, you're gonna be adding another $5,000. That depends on how much the concrete itself is in your area and that of course that uh, price will be adjusted. Because dome homes are made of concrete they have no problem with maintaining its temperature and regulating it. Not only that with typical homes when you make them they have the walls that hold up the roof structure itself but when you have a dome home the dome home itself the actual roof is the structure so all the walls that you make inside are not necessarily holding up the roof so it's extremely strong and because it's extremely strong it actually holds up to weather conditions that normal typical homes don't hold up to, like hurricanes, tornadoes, and even earthquakes. Another aspect of monolithic dome homes is the fact that they are fire resistant because they're made of concrete. So most likely you're not going to have a problem with fires. They also make really great rental opportunities. So if you're thinking about doing this and turning them into rental units, it is a very good way of earning extra income. Another great thing about dome homes is they do have the opportunity of making them yourself. Now there's lots of companies out there that will show you how to do it. If you're are super handy, I suggest you give it a whirl. If you're not, there's companies that will help you all the way through and they're throughout the United States. There isn't one specific company that makes dome homes. There's several. Just do your due diligence if you're thinking about making a monolithic dome home. I love saying that word. <laughs> monolithic. I kind of envision a gargoyle. <laughs> monolithic. All right, the next affordable housing option you've heard me talk about a million times on my channel, and that is manufactured homes. And they get a very bad rap because I hear it all the time in my comments. They say, first of all, they're built like garbage. Secondly of all, they are attract tornadoes. Thirdly of all, they are the worst plumbing and materials that you could possibly put in a home. Lastly, they'll say they attract bugs and rodents and all sorts of different things. I want you to change your mind about this because first of all, manufactured homes have improved exponentially over the years and every year they're always improving how the first of all they're constructed secondly of all if you think about a house going down the road at 80 miles an hour and it's still put together by the time they're actually putting it together, then it's probably a pretty safe home. Thirdly of all, they have improved how the weather strapping holds down these homes. And in many cases up in the north, they actually even attach them to foundations and they're less likely to be flying off in the air. Now, I know that you've seen tons of news reports and what's the first thing they always show is they show a manufactured home park with these homes that are going down like dominoes. And when you see those, you're like, oh, well, why would anybody live in a manufactured home? Well, in a lot of those cases, those manufactured homes were built probably before 1976. So those homes, if they were brought to go today, most likely would still be there. But homes that were built before 1976, they weren't built to any sort of code. It just wasn't a thing then. And it wasn't until after 1976 that HUD got involved and they had to meet certain kinds of building specifications. That being said, one of the biggest concerns that has come to my attention through many of my subscribers was the off-gassing. So I wanna show you a recent report that just came out where they actually addressed the off-gassing problem with the materials that are built inside a manufactured home. I do want to preface this by saying that every single home that you purchase, whether it's manufactured or not, will always have an off-gassing issue when it comes to cabinetry, but they are addressing it when it comes to manufactured homes. And this is what the report says. The National Law Review, the DOE, is preparing for manufactured housing, energy, and conservation standards. On July 7, 2021, the U.S. Department of Energy published a notice of intent to prepare an environmental impact statement that will evaluate the potential impacts of a rising energy conservation standards of manufactured housing. The draft EIS will analyze the potential environmental impacts of the proposed standards, including indoor air quality and human health, outdoor emissions of air pollutants and greenhouse gases. They're planning on looking at manufactured homes with all of these things in mind, so that way we have a better product moving forward into the future. So I think that's something that you could need to consider if you are considering a manufactured home, they're still trying to make them even better than they were the year previous. So don't poo poo on manufactured homes and don't call them trailers because they're not. And people that live in them are no different than anybody else. So stop labeling people that live in manufactured homes as they're less than you. Affordability wise, manufactured homes run as low as $65 
$10 per square foot. You can find some that are even a little less than that, depending on what kinds of bells and whistles you decide to put in the manufactured home. The cost really comes from the land you placed it on. So if you're buying yourself an expensive piece of land, of course, then the property is going to cost you a lot more. And in many cases, you can roll in the mortgage for your piece of land with the manufactured home itself. Work with a lender that's outside of the lot that's selling you the manufactured home, like a local credit union or your local lenders in your area. They're going to be more familiar with doing that type of process. In some cases, some manufactured lots will have a land that you can purchase from them and you can roll your land and your manufactured home into their system that they have there. Just make sure that the rates that they're offering are competitive to the local lenders in your area because sometimes they're a little bit higher and you don't want to pay more. Now, if you're planning on putting your manufactured home in a park, this is where I say, you know, please be careful because a lot of manufactured home parks, the rent is not regulated. So you could be paying, let's just say $200 a month. And then the next year they could come along and say, now you're going to be paying $500 a month. And then the next month they come along again, and now it's $700 a month. And it may be to the point where it's unaffordable. These prices are not regulated by the state and those manufactured home parks can raise the rents as many times as they want to. Now there are manufactured home parks that work like a co-op where you would have a almost like a condominium style of cooperation between all the people that live in the manufactured home park and then they maintain the rents and the only time they go up is when the taxes go up. So try to find yourself a park that is considered a co-op so that way those rents are maintained and you don't have to worry about them going up exponentially over the next five years and potentially losing your home. Now, the next type of home I've talked about several times on my channel as well, which is a tiny home. And as cute as they are, I love myself a tiny home. They have their problems and they have their pluses. So it's a type of lifestyle when you decide to buy a tiny home. In most cases, when you're purchasing a tiny home, you're going to be getting the ones that are on wheels. On my channel, I'm always talking about the ones you place on a foundation. Now, tiny homes per square foot are can be pretty expensive. I mean, you're talking about as cheap as $100 per square, but, but they can go up to $250 per square foot, depending on what you put in them. They're so small, that ends up being the total package costs you a lot less. And if you're building it yourself, you can cut out a lot of the cost per square foot it all together. I've seen some people actually be able to put together a legal tiny home and it's only costing them about $60 per square foot, but they knew what they were doing and they had a contractor's license and they had proper prior planning. So that makes all the difference in the world. Now with any tiny home or any of the homes that we talk about, if you're planning on putting it on a foundation that is affixed to the ground on a piece of land, make sure that you're properly permitted for having a, this type of structure. And you're always going to want to make sure that you have the restrictions looked at. Even if they're old restrictions, somebody will come out of the woodwork and say, oh, that's not legal for our neighborhood. And you were like, what neighborhood? I live on five acres, but somebody will come out. So if you make sure that you check the title company to make sure there isn't any restrictions on that specific piece of land. And you wanna make sure that you have proper utilities that are going out to that location because some locations are not going to allow you to not have some kind of septic system. I know that a lot of tiny home people have these things called composting toilets toilets and most areas around cities are not going to allow you to have a composting toilet especially around here they're not going to they're not gonna let it fly. No, no composting toilet. You have to have a legally certified sewage system that's been certified by the county or parish. It's parishes in Louisiana. So don't try to be sneaky and go around not getting the proper sewage on your piece of land because someone's gonna catch you. Now a tiny home to be considered a tiny home is less than 500 square feet. On some websites, it's less than 600 square feet, but anything less than 600 square feet is considered a tiny home. It just happens to have everything that you need in a house. It's just in a very teeny tiny home and they're super cute. They look like little houses. Now I can see tiny homes in the future turning into something that would be more appealing for the elderly that are on fixed incomes if they make them a one shot deal, like basically one floor where someone can get in and out. And there'd be a perfect space for one individual elderly person and it would be an affordable housing option. And I think that's what they should be doing. If they made more communities for the elderly that they could have their own home, I think that'd be a great thing. Now I always talk about having them used for veterans and the homeless and throughout the country that has been something that has been done in many locations like Austin, Texas and Detroit, Michigan. Now, if we could get more people on board with the idea of tiny homes, we could possibly see more tiny home communities throughout the area. And if you want to have more tiny homes in your area, go ahead and start going to those planning and zoning meetings and start making noise. And that's the only way things are 
starting to get done because the squeaky wheel gets the oil kind of thing. Start getting involved in your community and have other people get involved. So that way we can start regulating and having more tiny homes. Not only that, it adds more tax dollars to your community. I mean, what's wrong with that? Now with all five affordable housing options I've given you today, there's one thing that you're gonna need to do more than anything with every single one of them is make sure that it is approved by your county or parish ahead of time. I can tell you right now, if you work with your local county or parish and tell them exactly what you're going to do and you walk in with a set of plans and ask them what you need as far as permits and everything, I guarantee they're willing to work with you. And the other thing is, like I've said before, always check to make sure there's any filed restrictions. And if you have a piece of land that you've had for some time and you're not sure if there's any filed restrictions, you can check with your local title company or local title attorney, and they will be able to pull that up for you to let you know if there is any filed restrictions. Now there's another home that I want to mention, but I haven't done enough research on it, but it looks super interesting. A subscriber just sent this to me today and it was about hemp homes. So in the future, be sure you subscribe now because I'm going to be researching hemp homes more and I'm going to give you a full video on what a hemp home is because I think it's kind of neat and it's not something you smoke you actually live in it so out of the five homes which one would you live in I'm leaning towards the monolithic dome home if you didn't figure that one out to watch another video about different types of homes you can go ahead and click this video right here my name is Christina Smallhorn your real estate whisperer and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters